Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. This is Emily, and hopefully we are going to be finishing up the remainder today. This is the remainder act two, and uh, hopefully we are out of the water, and we'll be heading towards the end of this game because I am over it. All right, let's get started. I land on the hard floor with a thud. Ow. When I inhale, a pungent smell scratches my nostrils and stings my lungs. Light jabs at my eyes, tearing away the comfortable darkness I've grown ac so accustomed to. I grope around with my eyes squeezed shut. Ilar's silky hair is resting on my chest. They are still, but warm and breathing. I push them off and sit up. Ilar, are you awake? I shake their shoulder. They groan. I sigh, rub my eyes, and get to my feet. Everything is still fuzzy. Something is different. The debris. I notice a movement by my head and duck just in time to avoid a stone the size of a boulder. Why don't you just call it a boulder? <sighs> it drags across the floor, screeching. I scram to pull Ilar away from another stone heading our way. That's when I see Abyss Devara and curse under my breath. Drown me. It's grown to thrice the size and must have swallowed much of the furniture and smaller debris. It's tearing the library apart. The floor beneath it is gone. I see no signs of our real bodies anymore. That cannot be good. I wipe cold sweat from my forehead. How are we still here? I grab Ilar by the collar and shout their name. Behind me comes a sharp hiss. I turn around to a glowing thing in the air. With another sharp hiss, it flickers and starts to fade. Oh, sod. It's a shard. It crossed over with us. I run toward it, but my left leg is still asleep, and it buckles. I slam to the floor with a thud, knocking my breath out of me. Ugh, work, curse you! I struggle up and shout, Ilar, for Lura's sake, help me! As I limp toward the shard, pins and needles jabbing my legs. I grab at the memory. My hand passes through it. I blink and grab again. The shard stays in the air. It's so thin now, it could be a puff of smoke. No, no, no! I scream, Ilar! They mumble and roll over. Tearing at my hair, my eyes dart widely from one side of that library to the other. There must be something I can use. An artifact, a magical scroll, fuzz pants, anything! Do you know what to do, boy? I stroke the tattoo on my arm, hearing no response. Then my breath stops as I watch a piece of debris drift into the shard. It warps like a reflection on the water for a blink, making me feel dizzy. Then it snaps back to normal, and the shard is gone. I hop over, snatch it from the air, and stare at it. A figurine of a voluptuous priestess smiles at me. A tiny symbol like an eye is seared into her forehead. Putting a trembling finger near it, the itch of almost remembering tickles the tip of my tongue. Oh, this is how memories are stored. Relief, exhilaration, and exhaustion collide in my head. I sink to the floor next to Ilar and just lie there, panting. Maybe the cold emptiness isn't so bad after all. A moment later, they stir. You're awake! I poke their arm. Ilar sways as they rise. They look at my hand, then slowly look up at me with empty eyes. Don't touch me, they growl. My hand jerks back. All right, I slowly back away. Oh no, not this. Should have ran when you had the chance. As they stand to their full height and survey the library, the light around us dims. The mantra, give it to me. Their voice and the rumbling of a Vistavara conspire to shake the air, making me wince. Not before you tell me what's wrong with you. I want to know what's going on. Why is he so mad? Not before you tell me what's wrong with you. I cross my arms around, across my chest. Their eyes turn to me. I will warn you just this once. The next time you question me will be the last time. Do you understand? This is wrong. It's all wrong. They've changed. Is it, I understand her. Has the waters gone to your head? Has the waters gone to your head? Has the waters gone to your head? I am not your dog. I let the heat burst from my mouth, relishing the exhilaration. Instead of anger, Ilar only grins. It's too bad. 
They tilt their head, studying me with, ge with genuine sorrow. I had such high hopes for you. For us. With a snap of their finger, my left arm unravels like a bundle of straws. I only glimpse strings of red and white before a searing pain blinds me. Why is he evil now? Pain is all I feel, all I see. Flashing light cuts me like daggers. There's another snap of the finger. A radiant flower of pain blossoms on my right. There's a screeching sound intertwining with the flashing. It's my scream. A final snap. Flashing and screaming joins at once. They crescendo until reaching a blinding, bright, deafening silence. Are we dead? A slit opens within the infinity. An ancient voice, speaking an ancient tongue, sounds within me. Remember. And the light swallows me. Oh, no. Please. Useless. Completely useless. You didn't accomplish anything. You don't even understand how you ended up here. No, I don't. Wow, thanks, game. You're so dim, you had no chance. None. Don't even try. Save yourself and everyone else the trouble. It was embarrassing, sad, pathetic, a joke, worthless, waste of time. I feel like I'm being berated right now. It's over now. It's over. I failed. I couldn't do it. This is the worst. It can't be any worse. Why? How did this happen? But I really tried. What more could I have done? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm so tired. Why couldn't I just go to sleep and never wake up? Let what pleasant dreams come. Haven't you slept enough already? What? Was I sleeping? Weren't you? I don't understand. I don't either. I'm so tired. You will, eventually. What? Can I? Let's try it. Let's try this again. Let's see what happens if we give Ilar the mantra. Okay. Hand over the mantra. Something in their manner tells me I had better do what they say. The mantra. Oh, Devarna. Do I still even still have it? I reach into my sleeves. Hands shaking a little. There it is. I take it out and drop it into Ilar's waiting hand. Ilar sniffs the air. Hmm. Their eyes glide over my body. You have something from the near shallows. I'm gonna... touch the glowing symbol. Hands behind me. I trace the out- Yeah, I don't want to show him everything, though. He's being kind of a jerk still. I don't like it. Hands behind me. I trace the outline of the figurine until I find the head and firmly press my thumb into it. A blinding, immerwalled glow blooms in my eyes. A wave of ecstasy seeps into my thumb and travels to the rest of my body. The library fades away as I close my eyes and drift off. Light suddenly flooded the room as I walked through the mirror making me shield my sleepy eyes. I squinted at the array of vibrant fly lamps lighting up the sto stony chamber. Oh. Either stood beside an immense thing draped in a velvet cloth, one hand pinched in the cloth, failing to hide a grin. Are you ready? They asked, eyebrows twitching in amusement. I don't know, Ilar. You know how I feel about surprises, I said, butterflies dancing in my stomach. They chuckled. The cloth flew off. My mouth opened with disbelief. A large, upright tank, made of thick glass and dull brass, glinted in the light. A tearal fluid filled it to the brim, and within that fluid was... a perfect specimen. I was lost for words. Ilar beamed at me. Come closer. 
Unblinking, I stepped close to the tank and put a, a hand on the glass. <clears throat> Closer, Ilar said in a sing-song voice. Put your, he put your ear on the glass. As I squinted at them, I heard a faint, rhythmic thump. A heartbeat. My eyes widened. It's matured? Oh, I can't believe it. We did it! Ilar nodded. I don't know if I feel quite right taking the credit. It was your work, after all. <clears throat> My voice was shaky. We did it. How much waters can it hold? Have you measured? And how long were you keeping this from me? A few days. You're in meditation until now. I thought you'd want to rest. Look at you. You're barely standing up. They put a supportive hand on my shoulder. It felt so warm on my cold skin. I had long gotten used to the clinging cold and exhaustion sucking at me from within. But the rush of success was overwhelming now. Oh, the possibilities. We'll have as much waters as we need. Endless. Really, given enough time. Ilar chuckled. Yes, it's quite something. But let's keep our heads about us, eh? Now, how do you want to celebrate? Celebrate? Oh, yes. I did not think of that yet. Um, maybe that picnic by the standing stones you threatened me with from time to time. I winked. But I don't know if I can tear myself away from my work now that subliminate sublimation is in reach. Now, now, I'm as happy as you are, but this still doesn't grant you the right to overwork yourself to death. You know that. Your weight still worries me. We should focus on reducing the strain. Exposure puts the strain exposure puts on you now. I sighed and felt my cheeks warm. Right, of course. I have no such intentions. I will only overwork myself a little. I grinned and ducked my head. There's so many things to fine tune and prepare. Mass production for one. I'll have to open our reserve funds. I want to start on another 25 specimens soon. I thought she only needed 20 more for the final ritual. Either raised their brows at me. Contingency, I shrugged. There's still room for accidents and unknown occurrences. I would rather have some extra on hand, just in case. Ilar sighed, rubbing their neck and wrinkling their forehead. What? Tell me. Well, I don't want to ruin your celebration. But I'm concerned about its vacancy. What do you mean? Now, don't be alarmed, but I noticed some minute movements in our specimen here. Just small twitches, but it's gotten me pondering. Hmm. I put a hand on my hip. Doesn't sound unusual to me. I've seen living things in a heartless state do that. Something with the residual waters in the body. Yes, I'm aware of that too, but that's a good example. What happens to a vessel like that if left vacant for a long time? Especially in a place of rich currents and many way mirrors, like this tower? Ilar's words were slow and deliberate. Ah, Lukazi. I stroked my chin. That. Then there are Sunkins and Bruhi and other dark magi. It's not likely, true, but we should consider the possibility. Ilar's face was stern. Well... Not today. Today we celebrate. They clapped their hands and smiled broadly. I'm sorry to bring up such things on a day like this. Don't be. I wrote the order for a batch of divor divinorum leaves for warding already. If we also make certain the mirrors are covered at night, that should do the trick for the vast majority of cases. Eiler's mouth hung open. I, grimmed, I grinned triumphantly. You imagine I do not listen to you? I will have you know. I remember every... Something about Ilar stops me in my tracks. Are... are you alright? They're frozen in place. Why is it so hot all of a sudden? The air is dancing with heat, like we are in a desert. The walls, the tanks, even Ilar warp like paper caught in a blaze. Soon they're blackening and flowing into the air as ash. What's happening? I run through the chamber, breath burning and choking. The chamber is no more. There is only darkness. You. A voice reverberates from above. Isla towers over me, your sighs defying understanding. Eyes to black pits. Shouldn't have done that. With a snap of their finger, my left arm flashes and bursts into flame. A searing pain blinds me. The image of my arm burnt on into my eye. Heat is all I feel, all I see. Roasting the breath from my lungs. There's another snap. Is he going to kill me again? Oh, come on. 
There's another snap of the finger and an incandescent flower blossoms in my right arm, turning it into ashes. There's a sound intertwining with the flashing. It's my dry scream. A final snap, flashing and screaming join us. One, they crescendo until reaching a blinding, deafening silence. An eye opens within the eternal fire, an ancient sight revealing an ancient vision before me. Wake up, wake up and see, and the fire swallows me. Ah, here we are again. Oh, my head, why does it hurt so much? What happened to me? Isn't that the question? What was I doing? Something difficult. Why do you struggle so? I don't know. Why don't I know anything? That's good. That's fruitful. Huh? What? Not knowing. Only an empty cup can be filled. Ugh, what's wrong with my head? My thoughts are so strange. How do you know they're your thoughts? Am I going mad? I won't stop. Stop! Dear me, you're, you're as stubborn as ever. It's... it's talking to me. It's really talking. If these are your thoughts, can you make them think what you like? Can you start them when you like? Or stop them when you want? I don't know. I'm too tired to do anything. Then rest. Go back to sleep. I will be here. Who are... Oh. Okay, I'm gonna try try this again, and I'm gonna try to not die. Actually, let's see. Not before you tell me what's wrong with you. Okay. All right. I understand. Yes, I understand. They extend an open hand. Mantra. I reach into my sleeves, hands shaking a little. There it is. I take it out and drop it into Ilar's waiting hand. Ilar sniffs the air. Hmm. Their eyes glide over my body. You have something from the near shallows. Okay, we touched the symbols. Let's show them the figurine. Not wanting to test their patience, I produce the figurine. They snatch it, give it a sniff, and close their eyes, tilting their head back. This won't take long, they say without looking at me. What? Are we just gonna die anyway? What? It's as if the floor is yanked from under me. I feel myself plunge straight down into frigid water. It's black everywhere. I struggle upward, clawing with my hands. But there's nothing there. No library, no Ilar, nothing. And then, with a thud, I land on something soft. Gasping, I sit up and find myself in an entirely different chamber. It's almost here. Ilar is crouching and doing something on the floor with their back to me. There's an edge in their voice I've never noticed before. Almost here. Almost here. What in Laura's name? Where am I? We're so close. They turn to me, grinning wide. I can almost taste it. To be continued. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so we either die or Ilar turns into an absolute creep. Well, this was a short one. But I guess that is the ending of the remainder. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know what you thought about this or what you think about it so far in the comments section. Do you want us to keep playing this game? I, I'm still thoroughly confused about the story. I have no idea what's going on. Um, maybe if I played it differently, then it would uh, be a little bit more clear. Um, have you guys played it? Do, has, is there any clarity at all in the plot line let us know down in the comment section down below smash that like button if you like this video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed already and as always i'm emily we're am and em and we will see you guys in the next video bye mm -hmm.